According to a previously unreported instance in Arizona, Mexico's drug mafias are looking for couriers to deal with methamphetamine in one of the world's most recognized games. Grand Theft Auto players understand what it's like to fight for a Mexican cartel in a video game. However, they do so in the privacy of their own home. Despite the fact that the plot is absurd in and of itself, players are forced to engage in a variety of illegal activities. Much of the in-game corruption stems from the illegal trafficking of narcotics and weaponry. The protagonist in Grand Theft Auto Online can help their friends create a drug dealing business. The player has the ability to self-medicate with cannabis and bull shark testosterone. Furthermore, Cocaine Lockup is questionably the most profitable MC organization in Grand Theft Auto Online. Without any upgrades, the player can produce $30,000 every hour with Cocaine Lockup and GTA Online. After making the necessary modifications, the gamer can earn up to $74,000 every single hour. Clubhouses in Grand Theft Auto include a garage with a capacity for up to 10 motorbikes, as well as 7 more motorcycles for each club member. There are also more recreational opportunities, such as a staffed bar, billiards, arm wrestling, and karaoke. Furthermore, importation and exportation remain the most profitable enterprise in Grand Theft Auto Online, as well as the grinder's favorite because players can begin with a tiny investment and very quickly repay their investment and gain. The company has become immensely popular among players since it first became available in GTA Online. Many people, however, are unaware that legitimate cartel hiring managers are actively participating in the game and recruiting people for real-world jobs. Despite the absence of evidence, a Mexican authority said last year that drug gangs were recruiting children using popular video games like Grand Theft Auto Online. According to Forbes, the United States appears to have gathered evidence that GTA Online really is a recruiting ground for Mexico's narcotics gangs. Customs and Border Protection agents in Arizona uncovered approximately 60 kilograms of methamphetamine while inspecting a Jeep Cherokee in November of last year, according to authorities. According to a warrant filed late last week when they questioned the driver, Alisa Navarro, about her story, she indicated that she met a man named quote-unquote George while playing Grand Theft Auto Online in, in January of that year. According to detectives, Navarro claimed that they began talking on Snapchat after meeting in the game and later met in person in Phoenix. According to the federal document, the suspect stated that George asked her over Snapchat if she wanted to act as a runner, quote unquote, carrying devices to be peddled in Mexico that he, he said she could earn up to $2,000 a trip depending on the quantity of the cargo. Federal officials acquired Snapchat communications from Navarro's phone in which George promises a great deal of money and offers to use a truck, which is believed to be identical to the Jeep she was caught in. Drug gangs routinely try and disguise drugs and electrical gadgets when transporting them across the border. According to Navarro's story, she was told to meet a man named Alfredo in Mexico, providing her with a Jeep and, and told her to fill up the tank at specific gas stations along the way before giving it over to another unknown figure. The methamphetamine was located in the gas tank, not in the electrical equipment, according to CBP officials. According to the complaints, when detectives asked if she thought the job or opportunity was just strange or maybe too good to be true, she admitted that it was strange, and she kept pondering and asking herself what she was doing while she was on the bus to Mexico. But she still decided to go ahead and meet her unidentified connection. It's unclear exactly what happened in Navarro's case, but she, she has been charged with conspiracy to import and distribute methamphetamine, as well as she's in custody. She did plead not guilty earlier this month. The Department of Justice did not respond to a request for an interview. According to Mexican police enforcement in Oaxaca last October, three children were allegedly recruited through the popular smartphone battle royale game Free Fire. According to media reports, the juveniles were paid $200 a week to act as cartel lookouts. Persons claiming to be part of various narcotics cartels such as the Sinaloa cartel were also accused of targeting young people late at night on video games like GTA Online's A Multiplayer Edition. Rockstar Games' Grand Theft Auto has been a very popular choice amongst gamers who wish to immerse themselves in a life of crime for the past two decades. <laughs> Several styles of grooming have become popular as a result of computer games. Because of the popularity of online gaming, networks like Minecraft, Xbox Live, and in titles like GTA Online and Fortnite have become very popular venues for youngsters to reconnect with old friends and establish new ones. The privacy of an online gaming account, on the other hand, has attracted predators. And the, and the Justice Department has prosecuted a number of dudes who've attempted to compel kids by concealing their identities behind online identities. 
We don't feel that video games are harmful. There's, there's no prior research linking video games to violence or other criminal behavior. Video games, like everything else, can be used for inadvertently detrimental objectives, though. True members of Mexican cartels, for example, appear to have utilized Grand Theft Auto Online to recruit at least one drug runner. Despite the fact that Grand Theft Auto Online is well known for a lot of things, you wouldn't expect thieves to utilize it, or any game to find underlings. While Forbes claims that this is exactly what happened in November of La Criminal and other GTA news, Rockstar has refused to announce a release date for Grand Theft Auto 6. Nonetheless, the sixth Grand Theft Auto game could be revealed this year, according to one insider, that is. Furthermore, take CEO 2's heated Grand Theft Auto. The trilogy's statements ruffled some feathers. Second, Grand Theft Auto Online has the largest number of publisher-initiated micropayments, according to our most recent AAA micropayments report. Many players were skeptical when GTA Online was first offered as a companion to Grand Theft Auto V, unsure of how long the open-world game would even last. And a decade after its introduction, GTA Online remains one of the most popular and watched online games in the world, which is due in large part to the constant backing of the game's creator, Rockstar Games. Servers such as the popular GTA RP server have evolved to create large groups of gamers that play certain parts in a continuous plot starring the same characters. As a result of its massive popularity, GTA Online has become a location for like-minded organizations to connect. Regrettably, that is not always a good thing, as I've already kind of established. In truth, Grand Theft Auto Online has a very dark side, along with literally everything else that humanity's created. Participants have been mocked, doxxed, and even slammed by other players or spectators or several streaming platforms. As is typical of a highly used social game, Grand Theft Auto Online players have been treated to antagonism and harassment. Nonetheless, all of these incidents appear to be fairly trivial in comparison to the unusual account of a person getting employed to operate for a drug gang via a video game about drugs. Despite the fact that Grand Theft Auto Online is still in a very strong position, gamers are already anticipating the series' demise. Grand Theft Auto 6, the long-awaited successor to Grand Theft Auto 5, is in the works, though Rockstar has remained uh, tight-lipped about any details. For the time being, gamers should keep their eyes and ears open while playing Grand Theft Auto Online and just be cautious who they communicate with. Reinserta, a non-governmental organization that works to prevent youths from being employed by drug cartels, recently produced a report which 89 minors were jailed in juvenile detention facilities and they were interviewed. 67 of the 89 children admitted to being active members of the cartel. According to Reinsert, recruiters are also encouraging children to encourage their peers to enlist. In any case, this incident serves as a reminder to be wary about who you meet online, and, and other certain jobs may appear too good to be true since the results are likely not going to be good. So if it looks too good to be true, maybe take it as such. That's it for today's video. Do like, share, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon for all that fun notifications when we post new videos. And yeah, that's all I got. Later.